Welcome to Gear Talk. My name is Pi. And my name is Shivani. We're bringing back Gear Talk. What better way to do it than to do our full review on the 5D Mark IV. We were fortunate enough to get the actual production unit before it came out so we could take it out, test it, and give you guys some real world practical information on what we think about the camera. I actually put 5,000 clicks on it. We did an entire wedding. I shot the entire wedding with this camera and then a family session with my own kids and family the day after. So I've had some good experience with it, but why don't we talk about it on paper first? All right, so this guy retails for 3,500, which means that you're gonna see a pretty significant price drop in the 5D Mark III and the Mark II. And I think for a lot of users that might be like the most enticing thing about the Mark IV is that it's gonna push down the other prices. But I would say that this camera represents a evolutionary step in the 5D series. You're not seeing necessarily anything that's revolutionary about it, but it is an improvement on almost every aspect of the 5D3. So what are the three features that you think make it stand out or make it different from the 5D Mark III? Well, so on paper, we get things like 30 megapixel RAW, so we have an, a bump up there. We have seven frames per second. Um, we have dual pixel AF and dual pixel RAW. We have expanded dynamic range. We have better ISO performance. These are all huge improvements. They've also built in other things into it like GPS and Wi-Fi and everything to essentially catch it up. It has an intervalometer now. They're catching it up to other camera models. <laughs> I'm gonna say that some of these features are massive improvements. Some are kind of like not as much so. Let's talk about my favorite first. Okay. My favorite by far, and I think most reviews probably haven't really talked about this that much, but when you get the camera out and you start playing with it, you're gonna absolutely love the dual pixel autofocus system. So first, what do you love about your Mark III? So from the Mark II, the upgrade for autofocus and for ISO was pretty massive and was very necessary. So I've heard some crazy things about the dual pixel autofocus for the Mark IV, both from Pi and from rumored articles on the site. So do you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's pretty much like all I talk about right now is the focus <laughs> system. No, and taking it out, so the dual pixel uh, AF system, basically what it does is you now have a left and a right eye type thing for the sensor. So it's a left eye and a right eye type thing. And the, the whole purpose behind that was to give the camera an improved depth perception, which means this thing snaps to focus unlike any other 5D series camera I've ever used. And in fact, I would say it rivals a 1D series camera at this point. Like the 1D is fantastic, but this thing was just incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, so you get snappy, accurate focus, and along with that comes live view touchscreen AF. What? Which, you all think that this is like an iPhone type, like, oh, this is, <laughs> that's meant for phones, but dude, it works so well, it's ridiculous. So, so how, did you, how did you use that on the wedding? Basically what you do is you go into live view, and you can see this, if I actually bring this right over Shivani's face and I click the button, it'll actually place this face tracking right over her. And if I move the camera around, that face tracking will actually follow it. So I can place it on the computer and I can move this around and it'll oh, wow. stay right where I place it on the computer. We're gonna show you guys some images from the actual wedding that we shot. Now these, keep in mind, they are raw files that have been exported to JPEG using the Canon DPP software because Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, nothing supports the 5D Mark IV yet. So these are unedited. It'll show you kind of what it looks like straight from camera with the dynamic range and everything intact. So when I was getting down low, like getting the camera into these awkward positions, that touchscreen AF was so handy. And you can see that on every one of these shots, it, it nails focus sure. and I can just go through and just shoot different compositions and it'll stick to it. So anytime the camera's in a low position, an awkward position, it works so well. Once I got over to the actual bride prep, I started using it with a macro and it would, like for this shot, it would actually focus right on the eyelash and I could move and recompose with live view and it would track the eyelashes. It was so handy. Like. Yeah. It was just incredible. It, it, it by far, I know other reviews out there have talked about the expanded dynamic range and ISO, which are huge. But for me, this dual pixel AF functionality and the live view AF was, was just absolutely amazing to use. So I loved every part about this. Look at this. I, I focused this one on the lips. Mm -hmm. Like, Woo! that is sharp. <laughs> yeah, it just, it followed it right on. It looks, uh, it's, it's crazy. Is there, do you think that there's a downside to the dual pixel AF in terms of, I mean, um, these are gonna be super large files if they're, you're doing a dual pixel raw, right? Yeah, so that brings up dual pixel raw. Now, basically Canon built a dual pixel system for improved autofocus and the side benefit of that 
is that you have dual pixel raw if you want it. And what that allows you to do is the camera will capture essentially two raw files out of the left and right side sensors. Mm -hmm. And then you have AF micro adjustments that are available to you in post-production. In talking with our, our tech rep, who basically knows everything about every camera Canon has ever made, I was talking about how much leeway do you have in the dual pixel raw. And he's saying that it's a mini to a micro adjustment, which means that from like your eyelash to your eyeball, it can make that adjustment mm -hmm. if you're doing like a macro shot or close up kind of shot. But it can't make the adjustment from like your ear to your eye. So it's a very, very small adjustment. And the other downside about that is when you flip into dual pixel raw, you actually have to enable it from the menu. Mm -hmm. When you enable it, it doubles the file size. So if you're Yikes. shooting 30 megapixels, you go from like 40 to 50 megabytes per shot to about 100. Ooh. And given how powerful the autofocus system is now with live view and the standard viewfinder, I don't think I'm gonna find a use for that. Imagine injecting 100 megabyte files in, from, from a wedding into your workflow. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> yeah, I, I was only getting like with dual pixel on, on a 32 gigabyte card, I was getting 350 shots. That's like nothing. No. <laughs> for a wedding, like, you'd be running like 256 Keeps gigabytes of... Switching cars every, like, yeah. hour. <laughs> so I feel like from a workflow standpoint, the Dual Pixel RAW, it's, it's one of those things that maybe for amateur photographers, they might find benefit in having a little bit of tweaks afterwards. I think for the professional, you're going to really appreciate the Dual Pixel AF and you're gonna to wanna to keep your file sizes a little bit smaller for workflow purposes. Mm -hmm. You also talked about dynamic range and ISO. Now going from the 5D2 to the 3, dynamic range didn't really change too much. Mm -hmm. ISO had an improvement. Going from the 3 to the 4, there are pretty significant improvements in dynamic range and ISO performance. This is shot at ISO 800, and you can see like the, the noise and detail in the shadows is far, far better than the Mark III. Yeah. Do you remember how like the shadows in the Mark III would get green when you pull them out and they kind of like get all nasty Disgusting, with banding? Like and moss, yeah. Yeah, it was one of the worst <laughs> like performing low light pulls. Like if you try and pull the shadows out on a 5D3, it looked terrible compared to a lot of other cameras. This actually looks pretty dang awesome. I mean, we're at ISO 800. I can't even see any, like there's hardly any grain mm -hmm. going on there. It looks fantastic. I took it up to 6400 ISO and it looked like 1600 ISO on the Mark III. Oh, so it looked like about a two stop improvement in the low light performance. Dynamic range is hard to tell right now. It looks like about a one stop improvement. There's a lot of range in these shots. We can pull the shadows out, we can pull everything. We have a lot of highlights. I would say it looks to me like a one to one and a half stop improvement over the 5D3. It doesn't look like Canon is setting a new bar for dynamic range and low light compared to like maybe the industry leaders right now in terms of sensor performance. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they're catching up really well. And those, in my mind, the dual pixel AF, dynamic range and ISO performance makes it already a great update for serious users of the 5D3. Meaning if you're shooting the 5D3 at the limit always, mm -hmm. you're gonna appreciate all the, the upgrades in this. It's gonna be very useful to you. So for those photographers that are looking to upgrade to the 1DX Mark II, would you say that this is just as good or good enough for what they need? Like you said, it's gonna depend on what they need, right? Mm -hmm. For, I would think for basically any portrait, wedding, you know, I don't see a huge reason to go to the 1DX Mark II unless you're a sports and action journalist. Like you need the extra frame rates. I mean, why do you need even seven frames a second when you're shooting like a bride coming down an aisle, you mm -hmm. could pop off like 60 shots of her coming Like why would you need 60 shots on this guy, let alone a 250 on like a 1DX Mark II? Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. So what you're getting with the 1DX Mark II, I think is a little bit of overkill for the wedding portrait, you know, professional. Um, and our expanded dynamic range, the ISO performance, the 30 megapixel files, the improved autofocus system, everything about this screams, this is what you should be getting, you know, especially at the price point. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, who should upgrade to the Mark IV and would you upgrade to the Mark IV? Yes, I will be upgrading for sure. Here's what I would say. If you're a professional photographer, primarily focusing on stills, you're shooting the 5D3 and you're noticing that you have, that AF is not as kind of snappy as you'd like it to be. You want some of the AF functionality, you want improved dynamic range because you're always shooting at the limits of the camera. You're always in low light and you need something that just has higher limits. 
you will absolutely love this upgrade. It's a great upgrade for those users. If you are a cinema professional, you might not want to go this route. And why is that? Well, so basically the 5D series was designed as the photojournalist camera. When Canon introduced video into the 5D Mark II, they did it because they're basically saying like, look, this is the photojournalist camera who does still pictures and wants to have great quality, but if they also want good quality video, it does that too. It essentially created that whole revolution in, in video and DSLRs, which was huge for the industry and people started using it exclusively for video, but it wasn't designed for that. Mm -hmm. Neither was the Mark III. And with the Mark IV, they're almost pushing people back and saying, look, this camera does great video and it can do it in addition to your stills, but it's not designed to do that. So a lot of the functionality that a professional cinema user is gonna want is not built into this. You don't have focus peaking, you don't have multiple file formats, you don't have, you don't even have a full frame sensor. It, it does 4K video, but at 1.7 sensor crop. So you're not even seeing the full frame. In addition, they limit you to motion JPEG, which creates massive file sizes. So at 4K, 24P, mm -hmm. you'd fill a 32 gigabyte card in just under four minutes. That's a really small amount of time though. Yeah, so like you're getting no time because motion yeah. JPEG is just not an effective 4K file format. Mm -hmm. So these changes are kind of in effect, Canon saying, look, if you're a professional cinema user, we have a lineup of cameras for you and it pushes you kind of back in that direction. So if you're an amateur photographer and you just love high quality photos, the best thing about the Mark IV is that it's gonna push down the prices of the 5D Mark III and the 5D Mark II and give you very affordable full frame cameras that are fantastic. If you're a cinema user, you might not go this direction. It just doesn't have the right tools for you. But if you're still a professional and you need that upgrade to the 5D3, you're gonna see significant improvements over this. I think you're gonna really enjoy the camera. That's it for this review of the 5D Mark IV. If you wanna check out more information and JPEGs from the camera, look at the link down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to click like, give us a little thumbs up. Click subscribe so you guys can see all of our new updates and be sure to check us out on srlounge.com as well as on the photography community on Facebook. My name is Pai. And I'm Shivani. We'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, we're... <laughs> Speeding is one thing, you gotta call action. I know, hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> all right, action. Go, go. <clears throat> You're in a state of like perpetually frustrated with me. It's great. She just nods. <laughs> <laughs> How are we starting this? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Why are you not with finger guns? <laughs> no finger guns?